Welcome into another episode of the Scoop Podcast presented by PPG. I'm your host, Josh Getzoff, and very excited to bring you a special edition here this time as we look back on the career of Sidney Crosby, who hit 1,000 games, becomes the 347th player in NHL history to reach the mark. And we knew Sid wasn't going to join us on this podcast to talk about that. We're talking about, of course, one of the most superstitious players in the NHL, probably in the history of the league. It's so we brought in two of his old teammates to talk about everything Sidney Crosby, Max Talbot, Colby Armstrong. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, thanks for having us, buddy. It'll be fun to, it'll be fun to talk about the old times a little bit. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go right back and, and let's look back on that. But I first want to ask you guys just a pretty simple question. You hear the name Sidney Crosby. Uh, now with everything you know, everything you've seen, what comes to mind? Max, we could start with you. Uh, to me, it's the ultimate leader. You know, it, it, he's the guy, he's the greatest in our generation. You know, he, he's been in the league for, what, 15 years, and he's been uh, doing great things over and over again. And he's changed the game in a way because of the way he played. And uh, he's a guy that brought hard work, leadership every day on the rink. Uh, you know, he's three years younger than me. I had a chance to play uh, six years with him. And I've learned so much from this guy, just watching him do his, his detail, his pregame routine. Uh, the, the work ethic he brought every day to the ring. So, uh, yes, we when we think about the greatest that I ever played, we might think about Wayne Gretzky and Marlon Mew and their own generation. But to me, it's, uh, it's definitely Sidney Crosby. Yeah, and I would just think of, uh, you know, now that I have kids, you know, you think of different things. Um, and I would just think, like, of a guy that just loves the game, right? And I think that's just like a, you know, something obviously I think a lot of guys in the NHL have or had as kids or, or ha or, or you know, we're just like that. Um, you know, so I, I think of a guy when I was playing with him, 18, 19, 20 years old. Um, yes, he's younger than he is now. And obviously a thousand game milestone has been a long time. Like, heck, I have four kids and I got married in that time. Like a lot has happened. <laughs> I still see like the guy, a guy that just really, truly like respects and loves the game. And like, that's his life, like eating drinking, breathing hockey, um, and a guy that's like poured his whole life into being, you know, the, the player that we see today. So, hey, Kobe, Kobe, you know how much he hated the game at one point? It got me sometimes some Sunday morning, it would get me pissed off because remember how we, we used to have like optional skates and, <laughs> and the guy would play over 20 minutes. A night, 21 minutes, and I would be the one playing 12 minutes, but I wanted to go out on Saturday night, Saturday night, and then let's say on Sunday there was an optional skate, but the guy just wanted to be on the ice. Like you said, he loved it so much, and he, he, his mentality was about getting better every day, and every time he had a chance to be on the ice and do what he loved so much, he was out there. So for us, that sometimes we just needed the break, that we love the game, but maybe just not as much as him. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, city skating, everybody's got skates. <laughs> so, you know, we were hey, we were always on the ice, Josh. Like we were it was it was crazy. There's no such thing as an optional skate then. Maybe it's just because we were all young and we felt that, but definitely, definitely Sid kind of led the charge with like getting us kicked off the ice by the coaches. Like, hey guys, like I remember Mike Yo having to come, like, hey, you guys, you gotta get off. We got a game tomorrow or you know, we need your guys fresh. And we would just be out there like messing around, laughing, joking, playing games. We just didn't ever get off the ice. And, you know, that was just Sid kind of dragging everyone along with them. But, and then we'd get in the dressing room, Max, and we'd sit in there half gear on, you know, taking off. We just sit there, skate, shin pads, pants on, all our top stuff off and talk and laugh. And he loved that. Hey, like Sid. Sid truly loved that part of the game, loves being in the room with the guys, loves laughing. He loves when we rip on him. He'd take a couple <laughs> shots at us. He got better at that, by the way. By the time he got traded out of there. He was he was carving guys up pretty good. Like, you know, he, he loved that camaraderie. He, he loves that part. And that's something I kind of miss, especially from that group that we had then, right, Max? And yeah, you know, yeah. Sid was yeah. a big part of that, although being young and, you know, a young captain. But he was a big part of the reason why – you know, our team was like that. Our team loved the game. Our team was fun. Our team worked hard. Our team hung around the rink after practice until the trainer said, come on, guys, we want to go home to our families. Like, you got to get your gear off. No joke. That happened, like, all the time. So, yeah, yeah. And, yeah uh, he's a guy that just loves it. He loves it. Talk about that, Colby. And it's, it was not just at the rink. It was for team dinner. 
you know, we would organize like team supper on the road and, and most team would go like whether room service, it'd be like a group of four here, a group of three there. For us, it was every team then on the road would be like 12, 14, 16 guys. We were always together. And one story I remember <laughs> was in Philly where we, we would walk from the hotel to the restaurant, <laughs> Del Frisco's or whatever, and the seekers were there, but he, he wanted the walk, right? He wanted the walk with the boys. He was always the one that, let's go, let's do it. And then remember, you almost fought against the, the, the autograph seeker one night. <laughs> but, but as much as he was, you know, a superstar, he wanted to be normal, treated normal. He wanted to be part of... Like, like me, the guy that's a, a, nobody in a way, right? So he, he, he was part of it. He was always there hanging out with the, the boys. He could have hang out in his hotel room and hit himself and just focus on the next game. But he knew the importance of team spirit and leadership. And it was not just on the ice. He, was, he always took the effort to be there off the ice also with us. And Josh, I'll say this, Max and Josh. It was, it was almost like clockwork and comforting as well because – you knew when you're going to Philly, you're going to Maggiano's. It didn't matter. It's not even the best place. It's like the same place. It's like we got to go to this place when we're in this town or this city. We got to go to this place. So it's like like there was no stress or thinking like what are we doing? It's We knew we got in, little downtime, boom, meet in the lobby at this time. Boom, we're going to the same restaurant we went to last time. <laughs> Cause that's like, you know, that's part of the, yeah. that's part of the creature that just comes me. And it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of, yeah, that superstition, stu superstitious factor uh, that kind of surrounds them. So you guys all came into the league at the same time, obviously the 05, 06 season, Max, you mentioned it. You were 21 army, you were 23, Sid was 18. I just heard the creature reference. And Army has referenced that name a lot. I've heard him say it to Sid's face, by the way. So this isn't anything that's like being hid behind closed doors. How did that come about? What's what's the creature? Give me give everyone an idea of what that is. Yeah, I kind of called him Creech for short, which kind of became the nickname. And actually, all the boys started calling him here and there, which is awesome. The creature, <laughs> the creature. I'm in the creature cave. I put up across the creature cave. Um, but I came up with it in my head, like just I'm kind of crazy, you know. I, I thought of this thing, like, how is he so good at hockey? How is he like this guy, you know? And yeah, like you said, I played with him at 18, 19. Like, this kid comes in the league, and I, I'm like, going, like, something's wrong with this guy. Like, how are you this good? How are you this smart? Like, how do you understand that already? Like, where are you? So I came up with this whole skit that, like, he was born under the bleachers and like Nova Scotia. <laughs> And he ate like popcorn kernels and old chewed up bubble gum. And like, he'd watch all the teams practicing as he got older. It's kind of like, it's kind of like the Grinch, you know, when he was like a kid and like watching from the, like the mountain above almost. And so I had this envisionment of like this hockey creature that was born in a rink. And so I just started calling him the creature. And, uh, and it actually is pretty good. Like his legs are like ridiculously big. His butt's like a hockey player butt. Like everything about him, he was like born to do it. You know, he was just born to do it. So it's, uh, it's a funny nickname in the craziness of my mind thinking about it. But yeah, that's the creature. Uh. Was the first time, I know for Army, obviously you were coming into the NHL with him. Max, you played against him in the queue when you were with Gatineau. Uh, what was your first impression of him, you know, going up head-to-head -head with him? And I want to mention, you had 98 points in 3 4 for Gatineau. You still were, what, 37 points behind Sid when he was, what, 16, 17? Yeah, he was 16 in the league. And, and I knew Sid from prior to that. I knew Sid, I met Sid when he was 13 years old because he started to get represented by CA, by Pat Brisson. When he was 13 years old and i was 16 at the time and pat would always bring uh that group of age when the 16 years old 17 years old in california for a camp and sid was 13 he's like oh we're gonna bring them right so i remember seeing this kid he's 13 he's with his father and he's with with riz and he, he's around pat and, and we got on the i'm like what was this kid and he got on the ice i remember him doing like a spoon like a, an amazing move around chris chilios which was, I don't know, how old and already <laughs> an all-of-famer by the end of days. And Chris Jones just turned around and tried to slash him. He's like, who's this kid? What is he doing here? You know, he just made me look like a fool. So everybody's like, wow, this kid's good. So after that, I, I met him there. And after that, in the queue, obviously, like you said, at 16 years old, he had 120, you know, 20, 30 points. And uh, I, I, you know, I was not far behind him, but, you know. <laughs> 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 he was just like... 
Huh? But Max, do you remember when, like, you saw, you saw him in junior, but, like, the first time I saw him, like, I saw him in the Memorial Cup. They lost to London Knights. Yeah. I was at the lake in the summer at my aunt and uncle's lake. I was laying on the couch watching it on TV up in Canada. And I was watching this kid, like, almost single-handedly pretty much against a really good London team, like, just – going to battle like he like this kid's good but he was like battling against like Corey Perry and like all these names that were the London Knights and it was like him against all of them it was just incredible to see but it was like junior you know and it wasn't in real life I didn't see him so the Pens draft him Josh and I'm at camp and I'll never forget at the at the Mellon Arena I was standing like down by like the main dressing room opening like where we came on the ice just against the glass just watching and I just remember seeing him like buzzing around on like a drill or something because he was on the other session and i'm like watching him going like holy smokes like he was seeing he was seeing stuff you know before like it even happened and i was watching it happen and like appreciating like this kid like what he could do like for me to get my eyes on him at the first time like seeing that i was like because you're always kind of like yeah we'll see what he does at the nhl buddy (laughs) okay kid (laughs) Uh, and then, and then we, I saw it for the first time. I was like, Oh my goodness. Like what the heck? Like this kid is just so good, but like, not even on top of that, like his brain, his skills, like the way his stick is perfect in his hands. Um, you know, his passing ability, all that stuff. Like, but like his compete too, like, and like, we're talking about Max when we came in too. And when he came in, it was like a split between generations as well. So yeah. it was like, kind of like the old, olden day style i guess you'd call it mixed and then it kind of started transitioning into like the game we kind of see today like a little different looking even the defenseman you know like you're looking at you know chris letang he's not a super big guy but like he's a good fast skater elusive but we had like hatcher and philly and all these guys that he had to like carry around and take the cross checks and get his teeth knocked out (laughs) So, like, not only just, like, be impressed by, like, everything that he did, but, like, his compete, his battle level, and, like, his, uh, like, psychotic compete competitive nature that he had. Yeah, that yeah. was, like, that's, like, what, se- that's, like, took, that's what separate, separated him, you know? And, Kobe, let's not forget Sidney Crosby, when he got to the, to the league, you remember we do the warm-up and we do the half moon, like, the half circle, like, and just shoot from there? Sidney Crosby's wrist shot would almost kind of bubble down before it hit the goalie. And, I, and I, I'm not joking. He's there at 18, 19 years old. He didn't have a great shot. Quick release. And I'm, you know, I'm talking about the, the best player that I ever played the game. But still, it was not one his strong suit. And he would still get some goals and, and a, a lot of assists, obviously. But then, to me, what amazed me about Sidney Crosby throughout all these years is that he did have weaknesses in his game, but then he was able to identify them in retrospect, look at himself and say, I need to change something in my stick maybe, get a little bit more curve on my stick so I can score more goals. I know I can score 50. And the year after, he changed his little curve, got home, worked a whole summer in Cole Arbor between you know his little lake and the fishing, and then he worked on his shot every day, changed his curve a little bit, Get the season after 51. Same thing for his faceoff. He was not great on faceoff when he started the league. Realized it. People told him. He saw, watched some tapes, worked at it, and got better at it. So, you know, a player like this could say, oh, I'm the best. You know, I'm already good enough. But, no, he, he is, you know, really trying to get better every day. And now, even at his age, I'm sure he's, he's doing the same thing. So, that's a, that's a very, very strong suit of him. Of his. Kind of working off that, I know this is a little bit cliche, but you guys kind of hinted at it there. When you see a player like Sid, and you obviously, both of you played with a lot of great players throughout your careers and played in a lot of different situations throughout your careers, but when you get on the ice with a guy like that, can you immediately tell there's just another level there that people have not seen before and people have not been able to reach before in this game? Well, I'll I'll say like 100%. like, Like you saw it like your first practice. like. The skill level, the speed, the power, but like the competitiveness that we were talking about, Josh, like your first practice, like is elevated, like so high. You get on a two on one drill with him. Like if you are not dialed in and ready to go, he'll leave you in the dust. Like you are just not going to keep up because his level is, was like every day, like here. And if you came in and you were like here, he would just eat you up. 
you would just be done. You'd look awful. You, you, it, it's just like, there was just such a, uh, preparation to like practice, to keep up with them. Like you knew like the, the, uh, that the practice was going to be so high tempo and so like intense and really competitive. Um, so it's like, you had to prepare for that, Josh, like you had to get ready to go. I remember some days, like when it wasn't going so hot for me personally, and I was playing on his line and I was thinking like, Oh my God, like if I, I was like stressed going to practice in the morning. Cause I was like, there's so much riding on being ready to play with him because his level was like just so high, you know? So it's not even games. It's not even like producing. It's like, you better come ready to work and you better be at his level, um, you know, to yeah. work with him or else it just, it's, it just it looked really bad. And I mean, <laughs> he, he wouldn't care. Like he would just leave, he would just be gone. And if you were partnered with him in certain drills, if, if it wasn't there, like beat it, dude, like I need yeah, guys yeah. that are going to keep up, you know? Yeah, well, it, it's accountability. And that's what leadership is. He influenced yeah. people to come to his level, right? And for him, like Kobe said, it, it brings pressure to bring your game up, to prepare better, to, you know, and he looks at you and, and you know, he doesn't even say anything. You just know that you have to be prepared. That's accountability. It's what it's one of his, you know, biggest uh, – uh, positive thing it keeps you accountable and to me Sidney Crosby you know we, we can talk about the words skills or talent Sidney Crosby is skilled you know there's a lot of players that is talent so they can rely on their talent more and just kind of sometimes not work as hard Sidney Crosby is all about skill and skill is something that you work at every day and that's what he's good at it's about Kobe said it preparation getting ready every day and that's not something that's not a skill that's just a mental attribute that he, you have to wake up and be ready and focus on hockey. So Sidney Crosby is skill. It's work. It's, you know, anti-coordination. It's not necessarily natural for him. You know, I saw Sidney Crosby coming back of, of Christmas break without skating for two days. <laughs> that was so Fumbling pucks around. You know, he is human. He is <laughs> someday. Like, so it, it happens that it's like, okay, two days off for Sid. Like, you don't see that. Oh, man. And that that's, practice, you remember that that's practice? That's <laughs> it was, it, and I was like, oh my God, he's human. He yeah. is human because he, he, he just didn't have it this practice. And I was like, so happy because <laughs> I was like, okay, well, he, he can, like, you know, miss and all the puck. Uh, <laughs> so I, I will always remember that practice coming off like, he, he just, oh. Two days. Yeah. So people that are, are, are watching this, listening, whatever. Yeah. We had like three days off or a weird time off at Christmas. Yeah. And Sid decided to quickly go home for Christmas to Nova Scotia. He loves like going home. He loves like, you know, doing, he loves Christmas. So <laughs> he's going to go home. He's going to do this. He comes back and I'm telling you one day off is tough two days off and then he came back the day of the practice arrived just in time to the rink from the flight got to the rink we're all out there we're all happy it's christmas first day back sid comes on he can't like skate he he's losing the puck it was like it was hilarious he was like laughing too because it was so bad <laughs> How was that? It's so funny you bring that up because that was like the one time where he was like human. Hey, he was like, I, yes. and then you look at a guy like Gino that would go home in Russia and wouldn't skate one day of the summer and would come back and he'd be like spooning guys around. And you know, so to me, when I explain skill versus talent, it's two different things. It's two great things for a player, but it's really like that. Sid has to work at it every day, and that's what makes it even more special. You know? Yeah. I don't know if anyone said this before, but I just was interviewing the new Penguins general manager, Ron Hextall, and I was asking him about Sid coming up on the 1,000th game, and he called Sid a blue-collar superstar, which yeah. I feel like is what you just said, Max. Am I right with that? He's the best grinder in the league. You know, it, it, it's really what he is. He thinks they've been great, obviously, uh, but he's a hard worker. He, he is a blue-collar, and look at his goals. Like I said, when he was young in his career, he didn't have the best, hardest shot. It was, it was accurate and it was quick, but he would go in the dirty areas. That's what, look at Sid, what, like you can look on, you know, advanced stats, everything from where he scores his goals and it's around the net. It's where it hurts. That's where he goes. Yeah. Uh, he plays a 200 foot game. He does come back and he does work hard and he doesn't cheat his goals. 
and 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 I think uh, Ronnie Stahl knows this guy very well. <laughs> yeah, he's right. He's right. You know what, Josh? I don't know if I'm going to blow up uh, your talk here or what you have prepared for questions, but in I saying that, you're blowing everything up, Army. <laughs> <laughs> you're used to it. Uh, in, in saying that, I, I was just it made me think of like my like my favorite Crosby moment, and I got it. Uh, as a, like a fan, just as a guy, just as a guy in the stands. I was still in Wilkes-Barre. I have not been called up yet. It was Sid's first year. And Steph Dubé, our, our uh, strength coach, said, hey, uh, hey, armpit, you want to – he was this French accent. Hey, you want to come with me? And he's like, let's go watch uh, Crosby in Philly. It's a couple hours down the road. I'm like, yeah, let's go. You know what? We'll go down there. We'll have a nice meal. We'll go watch Sid. We'll just get tickets. We'll sit in the stands. I'm in the minors. No big deal. We go to this game against Philly, and like first time seeing Sid also play like an NHL game live too, which was really cool in Philly, nonetheless. And it was the game that he scored the overtime winner, where he like got his teeth knocked out by Hatcher. He gets <laughs> down and he's yelling, he's slamming his helmet. Like this kid is just a disturber on top of being really good, right? <laughs> say that but like that's what he was he was like in he was he was involved man like they were trying to get to the young kid and his nose is right in there and he didn't back down to the point where it was like i was in the stands literally drinking a beer watching the game and like he gets a he gets a breakaway scores in overtime and then he has like that celebration where he's like yeah his teeth are all chipped his mouth is bleeding it's like a great it's like a great Crosby clip, but that was like when I first saw him and I was like in the stands, as like a fan watching and I saw that. I saw like the battle level, the comp compete, the skill, the guy that got it done like when it mattered. Uh, and then like against Philly in Philly, which was really cool, a fan in our section just said, I think we're going to have to get used to this. Just some <laughs> random guy. And I was sitting there with Steph, you know, and I, we were like, oh, man, like this guy, like this is something else. He goes into like the, you know, the devil's uh, dungeon and uh, in Philly, uh, big rivalry, you know, Hatcher, all these guys are just taking swings at him. And he just kept pushing back and scored the, the OT winner, teeth knocked out bleeding. Like that was like, that was like a cool moment. You know, I think that's one of my more favorite Crosby moments through these a thousand games. I know the cups and the awards are really cool. Also. <laughs> um, anyway. Just like seeing that was really cool. Yeah, my, my moment is is actually very bad compared to your your moment, but it shows the quality of Sidney Crosby. Is after we won the cup in '09, uh, Gino and I we went to the awards in Las Vegas, right? Brought the cup and everything, and Sid Sid the Sid was hurt still, so he didn't go. But he met us in Miami. So in Miami, we're not even a week away from winning the Stanley Cup, right? His first cup, this and that. We're in Miami on the beach and just relaxing and stuff. And then we go to dinner that night. We hang out, go to bed pretty late. So next morning, you know, I'm showing up for breakfast, my bathing suit, and I'm just going to lay on the beach again. I see Sid with his running shoes on, with his little short, and he's going to run. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I'm like, we, you know, it's not even a week that we, you know, we won the cup. And I was like, he's going to run and he's going. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are we doing? I was like, oh, let's prepare to win another cup. I'm like, dude, relax. <laughs> so that's like just to show how driven this guy is, right? He was already thinking about the second cup. So uh, <laughs> I was like, man, not the time. I'm not following you there. I'm going to relax and get a tan. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Max, when you guys won that cup in 2009, obviously you kind of were a big deal that night, scoring both goals for the Penguins in that win. But and I know Sid was hurt, not necessarily able to be on the ice as far as playing, you know, the last couple periods of that game. Was he doing anything on the bench? I, you, I always see the shot of him kind of jumping up and down at the end of the bench. His time was expiring and Flower makes that save on Nick Lidstrom. But were, were you hearing from him at all? Was he with that C on his sweater? Is he doing anything extra? He was a calm presence. He was a motivation by being calm and being there. And just, it was, and Sid has never really been about words, right? Yeah. It's about attitude. It's about just being there and doing the right things. And you knew that it was so hard on himself to not be able to help the team in, in that situation, right? It's a period and a half of, of hockey, but just wanted to stay on the bench. And in between the period, he was there and he was present. And yes, he, 
he, he, he said a couple of things, but on the bench, he was just, just there. And it's not about, you know, the like screaming or anything. Yeah. It was almost like, I'm giving you a reason. Let's win it for me kind of in a way, because we respected him so much and he was such a, a strong presence for us. You guys knew he wasn't coming back in that game then? When he yeah, was- yeah, yeah, because he tried it right after, right? He, you see him, he tried a shift and, and he did 15, 20 seconds. So uh, once that happened, you, you kind of know he was sitting like where I usually sit on the bench, like just when, <laughs> you know, in the corner behind the door where you can't get on and the coach forgets you. That's where he was sitting. <laughs> so you, you knew he was not going to come back. Army, you uh, you know from working with me a lot that, that I love my numbers. I'm, I'm a stack guy um, yeah. at times. But when, when the Penguins play the Islanders, you guys probably both know firsthand that Crosby feasts on them. I mean, he has the most points against the Islanders than he does against any other opponent in his career. But I found it interesting you brought up that Flyers game, Army, because the Flyers are right behind the Isles for how many points uh, Crosby puts up. And honestly, as someone who grew up in Philadelphia, I saw it firsthand with the torture uh, you know, pretty often when I was growing up. Now I'm enjoying it from this side. It's a lot more fun when you're beating up on the guys. But I, I wanted to ask you guys, do you sense him getting a little extra juice when he plays those games against the Flyers, against the, the Islanders? I know he plays it down in the media, but I think we could put it on the table here. Do, do you feel like that he gets a little extra juice going into those places? Well, I think so. Yeah, I think so for sure. Like he's a human, right? Like it's, <laughs> this is true. But uh, I... I it's kind of funny because, and Max will probably tell you this, we used to rip on him a lot of times because he's like, oh, my God, you're so lucky, dude. You are so, like, how does that bounce to you? Like, dude, you get the luckiest breaks. Like, oh, of course, you, of course, you know. And he would kind of get, like, upset a little bit in, like, a joking way. Like, what do you mean? That's not, like, what? You know, but it's <laughs> like, because he works his butt off, you know. Like, he works his butt off. Like, when you work that hard and you're that good, like, yeah, you get lucky. You're damn right you get lucky. Um, so when you get in, like, moments like Philly, you get in moments like these big moments, like, he's he's ready for it. So it's always like, oh, of course that happens to Mario. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course Gretzky needed five more goals to get, like, whatever, three more, whatever he got to get 50 and 39. Nine. Of course he got them all in that night, you know? Like, oh, of course it happens. Either. But, like, when you're like that good and like you're that determined and you're and like you know the moments get the biggest and and you know you're against a rival and you're supposed to do really good like i don't know he always just seemed to like those guys seem to just get it done right and sid's the exact same way he's just a guy that gets it done in big moments because he's ready for it like he is that good he's that prepared um and you know when you're when you're in that you know I, I don't even know what's it like 0.2% of players in the world that were, you know, that good that, you know, big things happen to those guys. And man, Sid's had some great moments just because of, uh, of all the things I just mentioned. So yeah, when you get against good rivals and the, like the stakes get a little higher, they get a little bigger. Um, you know, it's no surprise to me that he's able to rise to the challenge and always seems to be the guy getting it done in, in big moments. Well, I know he's uh, obviously had a lot of big moments in his career, as we said, and a lot of big goals. I feel like one of the biggest goals is not going to count towards his NHL total with the 1,000 games coming up, the, the golden goal for Team Canada. But I wanted to ask you guys both about that, both Canadians. Uh, both have worn the, the, the Maple Leaf for international events at one point or another in your careers. What was that like when you watched that goal go in, when you watched that moment, like for it to be Sid, for it to be a guy you know you're so close with and means so much to the sport and the country to score that goal and put Canada back on top? Oh, to me, it was more of a obviously moment, you know, like. Yeah, like what I just said. Exactly. It's like what I just said. Yeah, it's like, of course, Sid, he's got to score a golden goal. <laughs> you know, it's like you could have not, like, write it any better. And that 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 was him. That's it. That's the way he scores his goal. It was not the prettiest goal. It was just a quick shot between the legs. Uh, but the celebration, everything, the atmosphere there. I remember watching the game and just like, and I'm sure most Canadian, every Canadian was like, yeah, <laughs> he's the king. He was like, for me, you're right, Josh, when you, you mentioned that. It's like, you think about the Stanley Cup, you think about everything. A Stanley Cup is the whole city and the fan base. That's more than just the city. But but the golden goal like this, it, it's a whole country, right? The whole world is watching. It's the whole country. And it's like 
he's got the maple leaf here and it's his team and he ends up scoring the the overtime goal so it, it was just a perfect hockey moment written by the hockey gods man I, well I'll, I'll add to that i was in atlanta obviously traded uh <laughs> was uh <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, at, I looked up on the internet like Canadian bar. So there's this one Canadian bar. I went there, packed with Canadian people to watch that game. And so I'm watching. It's like on this giant screen on the wall. It was really cool. Like random Canadian people from all over Canada, living in Atlanta, that met at this bar to watch this. And like people jumping and going crazy. And I had like the same reaction, Max. I like my like my wife was sitting in the corner eating, you know, she's just hanging out quietly. I was like kind of intermingled standing with the crowd watching. And then like he scored, and I just came back to the table. I'm like, of course, of course, of course he scored it. Like, of course he did. Of all the people, of all the great players on that team, it's it, it, he gets it, you know? Yeah. So I had the same, I had like the same reaction as Max. <laughs> That is so funny to hear that because obviously, like you said, you know, you work to put yourself in those situations. He takes that pass from Jerome McGinley and scores that goal, and uh, the rest is history. I had a couple more things for you guys, and then we're going to wrap this up. This has been a lot of fun, and I think it's been pretty cool to hear some of these stories. But you mentioned the aspect of him playing for Team Canada, him being, you know, the king, as you said, Max, uh, for when he scores that goal. But I think that also just goes for hockey in general, really over the, what, the last 15 years that he's been in the league, he's been the face of the league. And I don't think he's really shied away from that. I mean, you guys talked about it. I've seen it too, being on the road with the team, the, the autograph seekers, he doesn't really ever seem to say no to those guys. He, he always, you know, gives them the time of day, whether it's just a quick flyby for a signing or a picture or whatnot. And I don't know if that's the case with some other guys around the league that also are looked at to be quote unquote faces of the league and, and, you know, represent the national hockey league. How much have you seen in that side of him that he just kind of embodies that, but also doesn't look at it almost as a chore, but as something that he just is, you know, he's, he's the face of the league. Well, to me, it's just a guy that comes from a good family with good values, but more than that, he went to the right school. How many years? He lived 20 years at Mario Lemieux's house. <laughs> I think he still lives there. But, you know, like, and when you think about Mario Lemieux, you think about that, about his class, about the way that he, you know, he walks and he's got the respect of everyone. So Sidney Crosby was, he already had it in him, right? It's his own personality. It's his parents. But then you live at Mario Lemieux with Natalie, with the kids. It just keeps you grounded. And he was able, to, he's a guy that's able to absorb all this and, and, and do his own way. And like you said, uh, he was always there for the right reason. I'll never say no. His, his image, you know, you, you go, you try to go online and find something negative about Sidney Crosby. It's, it's, it's not there. And that's because he lived his life as a, as a superstar uh, the right way, thinking about all the consequences, thinking about making the right choices, be there for represent a, uh, you know, a, a city, a country, and it comes with responsibility, but he was always aware of that. And to me, uh, and when you, when we'll all look back at his career one time, or we can, we can look back at his first thousand games, uh, flawless, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's perfection. Yeah. And, and you know what, the one thing that like impresses me is just his thoughtfulness as a person. I think, um, you know, in today's day and age with TikTok and uh, Twitter and Instagram and like, you know, like, I wouldn't say it's just like attention seeking or anything like that because, you know, but Sid's definitely not. He's like low key, but <clears throat> the thoughtfulness that he has done for, you know, staff of the team, fans, low key, um, you know, his friends and family, the way he, the way he includes people in his incredible i firsthand have got to experience it um sharing you know awards having me around you know stanley cup championships i have no business being there inviting me to come and hang around though like just he's a really truly thoughtful guy the team's in one spot and you know he get he has the a photographer for the team to make sure you get a picture of that on his own and then we'll send like a framed picture to everyone so that they have that moment like stuff that like normal people or you know, guys on the team anyways, just wouldn't think of, you know, and, and um, he just kind of does it because he's just like a thoughtful, caring, good guy. And, and um, you know, I, I appreciate that humility um, and thoughtfulness. And if you're looking for a guy that's going to be a 
like a real role model for you in sports, if that's what you choose, um, you can't go wrong by picking Sidney Crosby. Well, let's wind down with this uh, as we reflect on a thousand games for Sid. I'll, I'll leave it to you two to end this one out. Uh, and whoever wants to go first can start. If you have a message to Sid, and remember, this will be seen by everybody. So keep it, keep it <laughs> in whatever way you want. Uh, but if you have a message for Sid as he hits a thousand games, feel free to fire away right now. Uh, go ahead, Colby. I would just say, and I probably will say this to him, but I guess it's just thanks for a thousand games of magic, honestly, over the years. Um, and now for me, especially, like, I'm, you know, done playing. I hang out with Josh Getzoff, and Josh is like, like, why can't this guy still be playing? I got to hang out with this guy. <laughs> but I'm truly lucky, much like the rest of Pittsburgh is, and whether they think about it or not, uh, or the media here, whether they think about it or not, are not how lucky they are to have their butts in the seats uh, whether it's at ppg paints arena at your local pub in pittsburgh or on your couch and being able to watch him over these uh, a thousand games um you know do the magic that he's performed for this city and like the greatness that he's done so i would just say thanks for a thousand games of uh, of magic right now and who knows what's to come with him but um, it's been a great milestone to watch him play, and I appreciate being able to sit in the stands or in the press box now uh, and watch all of it. Tough to top, Kobe. Uh, you know, as for myself, I'd say thank you also. Thank you for, you know, inspiring a lot of people every day, day in and out, uh, showing people what is, you know, working, what is uh, dedication to a cause, which is, you know, trying to be the best hockey player that you can be. And I think it's... It, it just you do it in a way that I haven't seen anyone else do it. Uh, you you showed me a lot along the way out how, how to work, how to be serious, how to care, uh, when to have fun, when to to focus uh, on the job. And and uh, I think Kobe, when you mentioned how you know Sidney Crosby is thoughtful, you're you're spot on, and he's thoughtful for everyone that he cares about. And uh, you know, like he said, I think we've all been very privileged to. To, to be around him uh, as Penguins fans, Penguins teammate, uh, it's a privilege to watch you perform for a thousand game and, uh, you know, cheers to a thousand more. Well said. Guys, can't thank you enough for your time. I, I know the schedules are busy. I know the kids are both back in school for both of you, though, so that, that gives you some time to hang out with us. So we Thank God. You. Thank you for taking <laughs> I was going to say, are we done talking about Sid so we can talk about Max and I now? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next podcast. I feel like we got to do another one. Hey, when is Sid going to do a podcast talking about us? <laughs> hey, I'll be on next to talk about you two. How about that? I love it. Yeah, it'll be a short one, but okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys thanks a lot for taking the time thank you josh thanks buddy thanks all everyone. right that's max talbot and colby armstrong and again congratulations to Sidney crosby 1000 games he becomes the 347th player in nhl history to hit that milestone i'm josh getzoff thanks to everyone out there for listening to the scoop podcast presented by ppg we'll catch you next time